I'm excited to share with you that I recently passed the Certified Healthcare Constructor or CHC exam and it feels so good, better than I thought it would actually to have the CHC credentials. So I am going to share with you what helped me prepare and study for this exam and I hope this list of resources and this review helps you in your studies. The article I have goes through each of the, the resources that um, I used. There's a STARS rating and then how I think that particular resource helped me prepare for the CHC exam. And that's important because it's not my review of the resource or the course or whatever it is, but how well did that specific resource help me prepare for the CHC exam? So I actually had three weeks. <laughs> Uh, between the time I realized that I was going to take the exam and the time that I actually took it. And the reason is because I never really thought that I was going to take this exam. I, I had not planned on becoming a CHC. It wasn't until I realized that I needed a certification for the senior designation with ASHI, or as you probably know it, the SASHI. So the, SAS, the SASHI application was due three weeks from the time that I realized, okay, I really need the certification. And I immediately signed up for the exam prep course. And I owe Dave Dejeuner and Tam Adams a huge thank you because of their ability to teach and go through a massive amount of knowledge and really get me ready for this test. Uh, you can also take this prep course in an in-person format or you can take it at a self-paced e-learning type format. Mine was virtual. It was eight hours. We had one break for lunch and a couple breaks throughout the day, but um, it was a long day. <laughs> it was a long day and a lot of information. So I've got to give kudos to Tim and Dave for getting us through it. And I would highly recommend the prep course for anyone that's going to take this exam, similar to the CHFM. If you're going to take that exam, you really should take that exam prep course. Even if you already know all the information and you're very comfortable with the material, what I really enjoyed about the prep course is the Q&A portion. We had a Q&A portion in the beginning, then we had a lecture, and then we ended with another round of Q&A to simulate the uh, exam experience. And this not only got us familiar with the types of questions and the, the topics that would be addressed, but also you know, the breadth of knowledge that we had to know and recall offhand or apply in some cases. And it also got me thinking about how to answer these questions as a contractor. I, um, I come from the professional engineering consulting world. I'm a training consultant now, and I don't have that applied knowledge that our healthcare GCs have. And I've got to tell you, I underestimated how much experience truly help someone prepare for this exam. And Ashley makes that very clear. They <laughs> make it very clear that experience is your best preparation for this exam. And it is completely true. After going through the courses and the actual exam, um, it's really that experience that I think is going to put most people over the passing threshold. So rest assured, if you work in construction, if you've gone through some healthcare projects as a GC or a subcontractor, you'll probably be just fine. And you'll certainly answer some of the questions easier or more readily than I did. But back to the exam course, uh, it's a great deal. Like I said, eight hours of content, you get a, a handbook that goes with it, you get two rounds of questions to get you thinking about the topics and how to answer the questions. And uh, that left me going to the practice exam. So I finished the course and then a few days later, I took the practice exam and I had, this was about two weeks before I would take the actual exam. So I sit down and uh, you can do it at a, a self paced version. I timed myself. It's a hundred questions timed. I sat down, did it in one sitting, timed myself. I had plenty of time to get through all 100 questions. I passed the practice exam. Thank you again to Tim and Dave. <laughs> and I was, I felt very good about that. I felt good that I could at least uh, pass the practice exam. And I had some reassurance that I stood a chance with such a, a short timeline. 
Uh, what I also appreciated about the practice exam is it really pointed me in the right direction of where I should focus my studies. I only had two weeks left at this point. So I went into ASHI's resource page and they have a long list of resources and I enrolled in two e-learning classes, the NFPA 101 class and the NFPA 99 class. Um, each of those, each of those e-learning classes is 16 hours worth of CECs or continuing education credits. That value is ridiculous. I mean, that is such a great value to get 16 uh, continuing education credits each. So that was about 32 hours. I did not get through all 32 hours before it was time to take my exam. I got about halfway through the life safety code courses and uh, maybe a third through NFPA 99. I got through the medical gas and back and the electrical system modules and then had to come back after the exam and finish. Now these, these were really great courses. Um, it's again self-paced. There's a lot of video content. The real value in these courses, not not necessarily in preparing for the exam, but just to have these downloads, especially the NFPA 101 class, has a lot of handouts and downloads. That's invaluable. I think what comes with that content that comes with that course. The NFPA 99 also good. Um, you know, addresses the the fundamentals, uh, the definitions. The different types of systems and I and I got about a third through it and I, I felt pretty good about that and there were a few questions on the exam um, and it refreshed my memory in some of those areas. I also took some on-demand learning classes which were on-demand recordings and these were from there were three from Bill Koffel and Koffel Associates three around 2015 2016 right around the time when the 2012 um, NFPA 101 and 99 were adopted by CMS. So um, around that time when um, code reformation and adoption was happening, and I loved, <laughs> loved those sessions. There weren't any uh, continuing education credits, and the code section of the exam is, is a shorter one. So uh, not a lot of knowledge transfer from the recordings to the actual exam, but it was really good content. And again, it was a Q&A format, so it got me answering questions in an exam, you know, type situation. And I, I, I loved checking my knowledge, especially for NFPA 101. So I highly recommend those recordings. I think it's only going to get you so far on the exam, just because again, it's more construction based. And a lot of what we covered in both of those were more um, existing buildings, a little, a little bit of new healthcare construction, but a lot of it was uh, existing. The other uh, on-demand recording that I took was the chapter 43 rehabilitation chapter, of course, in FPA uh, 101. That was done um, at a ASHI conference a few years ago, maybe around the same time, 2015, 2016. Such good content, such good content. Jim Peterkin is incredible. Uh, at, go, at breaking down that chapter and going through all the definitions and you know change of use and what's construction versus modification versus repair and all of those considerations. Unfortunately, it was probably the least valuable uh, resource when it came to the CHC. But if you um, if you're looking to sharpen up your chapter 43 rehabilitation knowledge, hands down take um, that class and roll in it. You can also take. A quiz at the end if you pass the quiz you earn one continuing education credit which is awesome and this on-demand learning is free for ASHI members so huge value huge value there I did freshen up on my lean knowledge my lead knowledge uh, there's just a little bit on sustainability and um, lean process not a lot I, I went through the monographs there's a roofing monograph Medgas monograph. I don't remember a lot of questions, if any, on the practice exam or the actual exam. So I really think it goes back to the exam prep course, must have, and the practice exam, you have to, you have to do it. <laughs> it was, um, it was definitely worth the time and the investment. Where I think Ashi could develop materials for the future and where you might want to sharpen up your skills would be construction considerations related to clinical equipment, especially pharmacy and uh, imaging 
equipment. So get familiar with what's required when working with those different areas. Airborne isolation rooms was a huge emphasis, both in the class, the practice exam, and uh, the actual exam. And pressure relationships were widely covered, uh, ventilation rates, filtration, but I really think ASHE could develop content specific to standard 170 and not just reviewing the ventilation and filtration charts, but really spending some time going through those scenarios and working through those problems. So I think there's an opportunity there. So definitely make sure you are comfortable with airborne isolation rooms and other pressure dependent spaces. And let's see what else. Oh, so finance. I haven't talked much about finance. I didn't study finance because on the practice exam, I broke a 90%. And so I felt like I'd aced that section. It's a smaller section on the CHC. So I really didn't feel the need to study any finance actually. Uh, so I just completely just put that on the shelf and I only had, I only had you know, a couple weeks. Well, <laughs> I should have studied. I improved in every area from the practice exam, except finance when I went from a 90 to a 60. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna say it. I went from a 90 to a 60, by far my worst performing section by far. I did terrible on it. I'm so embarrassed by that. Um, I think I just, I got overconfident and I wonder if I misread a couple of problems. I'm not really sure, but that just tells you don't get too comfortable. Even if you ace one of the sections on the practice exam, go back, at least do a couple of refresher problems just to really make sure you have it. So I think that covers it. If I missed anything, I'm sure it's in the article, so definitely check that out. It has the links, the pricing, CECs, all that information is in there. Of course, you can reach out to me, message me if you wanna chat or have questions. After you pass the exam, let me know. I wanna hear about your experience and celebrate with you. I also want to know about the resources that you used, whether they're on the ASHE recommended list or otherwise. So uh, keep in touch. Thanks y'all and good luck.